tuning in tonight. Man, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do now. Because we got a lot of great things going on. And one is the Sure SM7B microphone giveaway. <clears throat> man, you don't want to miss out, man. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button. Slam that bell. Type down there as to why you like a sure microphone. It's that easy, man. And you're in for the drawing. But tonight I wanted to talk about what is the vibe in your studio. Man, that plays a large role on, um, you know, how, how the aesthetics are, man. Hang on one second, guys. I want to try to do something real quick. Hang in there with me. Hang in there. Trying to do something here. Okay. I don't know if I did that right. There it is. But uh, it plays a large role on, you know, how, how everything appears to be in your studio. And, uh, you know, the vibe of it, man. You know, you got to have that vibe going on. Um, <clears throat> I know, especially when you're inviting over a guest or whatever, and, uh, you know, you have them in the studio and, uh, you know, the, the way everything is and the lighting plays a large role on how they're going to, if they're going to be comfortable or not, you know, and it's something that you really want to work on. You don't, um, especially if you're having a female artist over, man. You don't want your place all trashed out and <clears throat> just things unorganized, you know. Uh, you want it as clean as possible and uh, presentable to them. And uh, you want to make them feel comfortable whenever, um, when they arrive, you know. And so, and you can do that by um, whether it's candles or <clears throat> lighting. The lighting in your studio plays a large role. Um you know, and how the person, if they're comfortable, whether it's, um, you know, uh, refreshments of some sort. I know a lot of artists like a particular type of refreshment that uh, they enjoy when they, uh, when they, you know, get to a place they want to ease on back and relax. And uh, so you need to have your um, refreshment cabinets all full of any kind of needs that someone might need. But you know, I've been working on my aesthetics in my studio for, I don't know, months now, man. And uh, it's one thing that I, I can, uh, I still need to improve on it. You know, there's some things in it that, um, that I want to try to improve on. And uh, hang on, guys, I'm just making sure something's working here properly. Okay, yeah, I've got a great sound level. and Hopefully you guys can hear me. <clears throat> But yeah, man, I'm I'm always constantly trying to work on uh, the aesthetics in my studio and how um and how that comes across to an artist that might you know come in my studio. And uh, you guys can't see, but on the other side of my room, I have a nice couch that's over there, which I love this couch in here because uh, if someone's taking a break or whatever, they can actually sit down and enjoy the couch. <clears throat> And not have to be up here by the monitors, you know, uh, the whole time. And they can pretty much hear everything great where my couch is over there. But your aesthetics, yeah, plays a large role on whether someone's going to feel comfortable in your studio, man. I, I mean, um, you got to have the right refreshments that uh, they might want when they show up. And that's easy to do. Uh, you know, you're just a phone call away and to ask them, you know, what, what particular things they might need. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. I need to clear my throat. I had some had some fried chicken earlier, but <laughs> anyway, I had to shovel it down because I wanted to get on the show and uh, be with you guys tonight. But uh, yeah, you know, call them. Hey, is there something we can uh, you know assist you with that you might need to make you know make your day or your evening a little more comfortable when you arrive? Uh, they might be just showing up to do a vocal track. Or they might just be showing up to do a guitar track. But whatever they show up to do, you know, you want to make sure that they're comfortable in any given situation. 
and hopefully if i can get my friend on here dennis uh dennis on tonight you know he's more experienced with having people over in a bigger studio and there was a lot of things that he would have to do to accommodate the artists that was showing up and uh i know that it's on a much higher scale and whenever you're dealing with uh you know famous people they um they really like things a particular way you know and um and i mean it has to be a particular way it seems like i read an article or did some research on uh, Steve Vai before. And uh, man, he is meticulous about having things a certain way whenever he does a live show. And, uh, you know, it has to have this, he has to have this in the dressing room. He has to have this, has to be this. It has to be all these outfits or whatever to change into. And uh, it just, uh, it's a neat thing whenever you can accommodate someone and their needs and at the end of the day, they're really, really happy with everything that you did and can uh, send you a little thank you card or a little thank you note as to uh, taking care of their needs. And uh, you'll really appreciate that. And so stuff like that goes a long way. Whenever you can get those little thank you cards and you can get those little thank you letters that's sent in on uh, the work that you actually did for them, um, just, you know, that pat on the back every now and then just makes you feel good about um you know, that you went the extra mile to please that person and to accommodate them without any extra charge or any extra uh, whatever. And they know, they appreciate that. They can see that you actually went the extra mile to get something done for them and to accommodate them any way that you can. So it ain't something you have to bring up them to, to them as I did this or I did this for you or I did this extra. They know, they see all that. And so... When you do get a thank you from um, that person, it just makes you feel good, man. You know, that you did the right thing. And you did, you went the extra mile. <clears throat> and that's what, that's what good, um, that's what it's really all about is whenever you can do things like that and accommodate people and their needs so that they're comfortable, man. It all gets down to the person being comfortable. You know, can the can the person because, you know, like, for instance, if someone was to come here and do some tracking at the studio. And I showed the slightest bit of nervousness or the slightest bit of maybe uh, feeling uncomfortable or, you know, worrying about whether they're going to be uncomfortable. Everybody's going to be uncomfortable, you know, so it's real important that um, you can accommodate them before they show up. Hey. Anything I can help you with, man? Something you might need special? Anything to ease on back and make your, your evening a lot better? Because that's what we're here for. And when you can do something like that and you can accommodate your artists in any kind of way and um, make their evening better, they're going to perform better for you. You're actually going to um, be able to work better in a better environment and a cleaner environment and a more relaxed environment for them. And so uh, everything's just going to go a lot smoother, man, whenever you can make those accommodations available and feel more at home and comfortable with that artist. Because the more comfortable you're with them, the more comfortable they're going to be in front of you. And so it works hand in hand like that. Um, you know, it really goes both ways. And uh, a lot of times it's really the vibe. It all gets down to the vibe they can tell if you're nervous and you can tell if they're nervous it's just the way it is man it's in our in our genetics that we're built like that to be able to tell when someone's nurse and i'll tell you something man someone can be nervous and play the piano you know and get by with it someone can be nervous with some butterflies in their stomach before the show starts and play their lead solos and play and get by with it but a singer, when a singer's nervous, <laughs> the voice reveals all, oh, man. And it really, really does. The voice tells all. You can hear it when someone's nervous in their voice. You can, uh, especially when they're singing. So you do not want the singer nervous, man. You want to make them as comfortable as possible so that when they get in, the, uh, get in there to do their vocals, they're really, really comfortable, and it's uh, encouraging them after the first take. Hey, that's great. Let's do another one or whatever. Um, 
just keep encouraging until they feel 100% comfortable. And uh, they're going to give you their best performance, and you're going to be able to um, bring the best out of that person. So it's finding these little niches to bring the best out of someone and to encourage them to get the best out of them uh, is important and plays a large role, too, as to having a successful um, tracking session. And so my big thing, y'all, is I've been trying to, like I said, I've been trying to work on the aesthetics in my studio for some time. And my biggest problem is I can get the lighting correct and really, really cool in my studio in a live situation. But whenever I'm actually um, doing this for the video, it's a lot different because, uh, you know, I'm filming and the lighting's constantly changing within, within the room and uh, the camera's having to refocus on the amount of light that's actually being produced at any given time when these lights, when these LEDs are changing. So although it's really, really cool and easy to control in a live environment, it's a little bit more difficult getting the lighting right for you guys and for me to actually get on here and do some videos and whatnot. So, wow. Man, I've been really, really working hard at it, and it's something I got to uh, actually put the cameras on everything and then uh, try different lighting in different situations to see how it's going to look. I actually want to light up this um, this microphone right here that I'm touching, okay, this Electra voice, and uh, I actually want to light up, but, but I actually put a little yellow light on it the other day, but it kind of blurs out everything else in the back. Check this out. Okay, so to see now you can see it back there. And whether or not I want to use that or not, or if it's too bright or it kind of blurs out everything else, I don't know. But I'm just trying different things, y'all. And uh, I just want to kind of get some different things going on and continue to work with it until I get the lighting just right. But uh, <clears throat> I've got, I wanted to tell you guys that I went ahead and placed an order on my Electra Voice RE20 today. So I will be doing an unboxing on the Electra Voice RE20. And I can't wait to get it and show you guys uh show you guys the unboxing on this microphone. It's another microphone that I've been wanting in my studio since I got rid of my older one. And uh although I love this sure SM7B, it is like uh it's a winner to me. I love this Sure SM7B. But uh, on the other hand, I really want to get that RE20 in here and start doing some stuff on it as well, man. So uh, we'll see what happens. Let's see if we can get this going. Hey, there, there's my friend. You know? I can hear you fine. You yeah, man. Yeah, how are how are you been? You've been doing okay. Awesome, man. Well, you know, hey, tonight I was talking about aesthetics in your recording studio, man, and uh, and I know you firsthand how many people you guys had to accommodate uh, to have just everything right when that artist showed up, man, and. Right, right. And uh, did you guys ever feel like that you have to like really extend yourself to a certain artist or just to do all that way beforehand, right? I mean. Right, right. 
Yeah, man. Right. And so what do you think about, Hey man, I've been, <laughs> I've been trying to get my lighting right in here, man. How does it look on your end? Does it look okay behind me? Everything. Every, oh man. Awesome. Awesome, man. Because you know, it is, it is a challenge, dude. It has been a challenge because I can get everything right. Uh, you know, um, without the cameras on it, that's easy to do. It's whenever I put the camera on everything, you know. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Mm -hmm. I know, man. I know, and I've I know, man. You know, uh, it seems like I've been in studios before, uh, Dennis, where I went in and things were a wreck, man, and it just wasn't organized at all. And it just, I could tell that uh, they weren't comfortable and it kind of made me a little uncomfortable. And that's kind of what I was talking on earlier, how we need to, you know, the more comfortable we are, the more comfortable they, they're going to be, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Wow. Wow. So, so, uh, yeah, you know, the studio stuff, you know, I, I know it's, you know, hopefully things are going to come back around for all, all of us and the music industry and whatnot. How, what's the vibe, what's the vibe where you're at, man? I mean, do you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might, might be, it might be even longer, huh? You know, well, you know, I, I did a, 
little show the other night on that, and then last night I did a little show on Van Halen, uh, on Eddie Van. Oh man, you know, uh, he was actually one of my one of my favorite guitar heroes growing up as a kid, man. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Nineteen eighty four. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Uh huh. Right, 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 and and then and then when you heard that, uh, when you heard Van Halen, it was like, what the heck? I remember the first time I heard him, man. It was in 1978. I was at the Texas Fair, okay, and uh, I was getting on one of those rides, and they were jamming it out. I mean, they had it blaring, and I thought, yeah. Yeah, I didn't even, I'd never heard of Van Halen, man, but I heard the song and it was just, man, I was like, are you kidding me? Who is this? I never heard anything remotely like that. Oh, <laughs> wow. Really? Wow. Hey, you know, Bull Tide just, just text in. Bull Tide always he 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 always gets in here and chats with me, but he's saying no audio on your end after nineteen thirty three. Did you do anything different? Huh? Or video after nineteen thirty three? I can see you and hear you fine. And we're twenty three seventeen in it. Well, I don't know. Let's see if he. Yeah, hey, Bull Tide, refresh your own page. It could be on your end because uh, Dennis and I can hear each other fine over here, man. <laughs> right, it's a comfortable place to be sometimes. <laughs> I did listen to some of it. Man, where did you get those stems at, man? Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. Oh, sweet. 
Sweet. Wow. Wow. Super fast. Super easy. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, man. Yeah, those stems are awesome, man. Actually, I'll tell you the one that I was hooked on today. I was hooked on listening to the stem of just hearing Michael Jackson's voice alone. And you know what else was really cool? At the beginning of it, you could actually hear the cans bleeding into the microphone. Before. Oh, I love it. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this is staccato tick, 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 tick. You know, and he did it several different ways. And I was kind of asking myself, well, it sounds the same way, but was he running it through something different? You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 because I was watching the video later on, and you could hear, you know, how it was more, uh, I don't know, it just sounded like there might have been a little more delay on his voice and whatnot, but how, yeah, how the, the Roche, mm-hmm. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And that bass track on there. Do you know who actually laid down the bass track? I loved hearing the the rank, you know. Find it. Yeah. Well, I loved I loved uh I loved how you could hear all the little slurs and all the little, you know, whenever you're moving your fingers across a real bass, how it sounds, you know, you got all that in between the notes being hit. It was great. I loved it. Thank you for sending that to me today, man. I've still got, yeah, I'm still going to listen to it more and listen to some more. I didn't get a chance to listen to all the stems that you sent, but <laughs> I love that kind of stuff, though, man. And I like, honestly, Dennis, I like just analyzing and hearing the little things, the little bleedage from the cans and. Yeah, yeah, man. I love that kind of stuff. And a lot of times people overlook the little details, but I like looking for those little details. You know what I mean? I, re I really do. So tell me, man, uh, I don't want to get too far off the subject, man, but what's that about? You're going to build you a 1073? What's you going to? Okay. I know. Mm. Okay.
Okay. 500 series. But yeah. Mm hmm. No, man. I know. Hey, you know what? And I, uh, I've been wanting to do a video on the 500 series stuff because it seems like even if you were to go out and buy that stuff, seems like can't you get it a little cheaper than buying the full rack space stuff? I mean, uh, Okay. Yeah, it seems like I've seen. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you heard anything about that? Uh, that you know, I'm a big API guy. You know, I love API stuff, man. But uh, have you heard anything about that new little 500 series um, DBX preamp? DBX, you know, they're famous for the you know the compressor, right? The the 168 now, I guess. But uh, man, they got a preamp out now, man. DBX, and I was just wondering, the 500 series, I haven't seen it in any other Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, I, I bet it sounds pretty decent. I mean, I wouldn't put it past it, you know, because, uh, and I like that. I like that 500 series stuff, Dennis. I mean, you and I talked about it in another video at one time. And, uh, but, but you know what? Well, here's the cool thing about it, man. If I wanted to come hang out with you or you wanted to come hang out with me, pff, it's easy. You got, yeah, you got your lunchbox, man. Mm -hmm. but I know. <laughs> I know. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Did it look like it? Uh, I just, I was just going to ask, did it look like it'd take, you know, maybe a day to put it together? Or how long do you think maybe, it, you know, for a novice, someone, you know? Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. You just want to... Yeah, cold solder joints or whatever. 
Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, wow, that's part. Exact. No. Yeah. And I guess I'm assuming they go through all those tolerances to make sure that it's, you know, that 1%. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, man. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, man. That's good. So you were talking to me about another company, um, a microphone company. Uh, not, not. Yeah, Mike and Mike. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I want that um, Elam two fifty one, man. I, you know what I mean. I just, uh, you know, when you're when you're in the studio and you see little things that could enhance your studio in certain areas, and you want those things, man. Unfortunately, sometimes it takes us a little time to get there. But I really dig that microphone, man. I'd really like to have that in my arsenal someday, man. Yeah, yeah, especially when you hear it, man, when you hear that baby, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But to him, it was. Worked the best. And he loved it. He went. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to leave until he was able to take that baby home. But mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I know. I love it though, man. I love it. I love it. But isn't it isn't it that's how it is though, man. You know, whenever you find Yeah, wow. Yeah. It just. Mm -hmm. It'll smooth it out, huh? Add a little butter to the voice, smooth it. Okay. Nice. 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 So, but. Mm -hmm. But for him, it worked out perfect, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So, uh, so, you know, I've been, uh, I've been working on my studio probably, I don't know. Shoot, Dennis. probably about four or five months for the lighting, you know, to get right. And, you know, I've tried different things. I've, you know, I like, I do like candles in my studio. I do like that, but uh, sometimes I just, I don't know. It's just nice kind of coming in here and seeing uh, all the different colors and whatnot. It's, I mean, it's at the end, of, at the end of the day, man, at the end of the day, I can,
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that. Awesome, man. You know what? I'm gonna check them out, man. I just put them in my notes, and I'm gonna check them out uh, later. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow, dude. <laughs> wow. Okay. And you can control it all right there from your phone. Wow. Are they LEDs? Are they LED? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> That's what I need to get in here, man. Yeah. That's even better, right? <laughs> oh, really? Are they expensive, though? I mean, I mean. That's cheap, man. I mean, really? Do some cool stuff. Yeah. Man, I love that, dude. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, man. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> See, I love that kind of stuff, though, man. I love aesthetics. I love lighting. For me, it's just always been just really easy to ease on back and get comfortable and do my little thing and get right uh, before I want to, you know, start laying down some tracks. And that's really important for me. I know that the more comfortable I'm, it doesn't matter how much I rehearse, right? If I, if I come in, I've already done my rehearsing, so I've already done my, my wood shedding. But I need to be able to be comfortable at that moment. And so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly. And sometimes, don't you find, because I know I find this, sometimes I don't like wearing both hats. If it's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But isn't it nice though, if you're going to come in and lay a bass track down, you know, that's, that's what you want your job to be. You want to come in and do your job. You don't want to have to wear all the hats, you know. So my deal is, man, I've been rehearsing the heck out of these tunes, man. And I've got them. I can probably lay them down right now. Okay. But my deal is, it's oh, man, i got to be engineer and be artist at the same time. Sometimes that's. And it takes some discipline to say, I'm just going to go ahead and do it today, right? Right. Right. Right, everything just locks in better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> that's okay though, man. Especially when you're laying the parts down. But you have you have to be comfortable. <laughs> Well, you know, all we have to do is stand on our bed or on the end of the couch and act like Eddie Van Halen, you know. I remember when I used to air guitar, man, uh, me and my friend, we were just kids and we would air guitar jumping off the bed thinking we were Eddie Van Halen, man. <laughs> the good old days, man. The good, old, you know, shoot, man. I know, man. So I've been working on my lighting in here. I'm going to check out that uh, it's twinkle.com, twinkly. Okay, perfect. Okay, yeah, man, because I definitely want to get... Um, I've got this side of the room really looking good. Now, whenever I turn the light, this main light, this overhead light off, it changes everything in here, man. And so I can, I can do everything from my phone, huh? Man, I like that, dude. I like that, man. I really do. Yeah, I want to do something different on, on that side of the room over there. I was telling everybody earlier, I have a couch that's on this side of the room. And I really like this couch in here, Dennis, uh, just simply because uh, uh, if I get you know tired or want to do something different or have people over, right? And there's a nice, comfortable couch for them to sit on and we can listen to the tracks in here or whatever. And uh and uh, I just like it. And I've gotten used to uh, mixing with it in here. And so I know how my room sounds now. And I really don't want to. They serve a purpose, yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm hmm All Right. <laughs> What do you typically, typically, uh, DB, what do you mix that in your room? You know, everybody likes to mix a certain DB level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What size monitor? I was just going to say, what size monitors, uh, Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Right, I think I have a. I think I have a. You sent me a picture of those, right? Didn't you? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, do you, those those near field monitors are they are they too loud in that room that you're in, or no? I mean, what do you no? Right. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's see what that sounds like. Wow. Yeah, I know. Uh, I mixed on some, um, and I really got to know these speakers in this room, and uh, that's why I went back with the smaller ones. But uh, I was mixing on some presonus, man. Those eights. God. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The quality, yeah. And plus, you know, you, you, you knew how they uh, acted and translated in other situations. But I was going to say, you know what monitors took me the longest to learn, man? And and part of it, Dennis, was the room that I was mixing in. Uh, but it was the NS10s, man. It took me forever. God. Man, and I read so many great things about that before I even purchased. I got it, and it took me forever to get my base right, man. And I was so frustrated for so long. And then I said, okay, this is what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start, like, looking ahead of the mix. You know what I mean? Just guessing as to. And then when I started doing that, I got better at it. But I... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to add to that note, I ended up giving those speakers to my son, okay? And he loves them. He says, Dad, I'm not giving them back to you. <laughs> he loves them. Man. Oh, yeah, man. So, he loves them. But, uh, dude, I... I've just had some great luck with the persona stuff. It was just, it didn't take me long. I want to say on those eights, it probably took me a couple mixes and man, I had such a great bounce. But of course, you know, I'm in a different room now, you know, so that plays a large role too, you know. So, man, I'm excited, man. I know uh, the new year is here, and here we are into the new year. Wow. It's hard to believe we're in 2021, Dennis. But I will. I want to take, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, man. But uh, I was just going to tell you, man. Um, So look here, I want to show you something that's on my phone. Let's see if I can get you see that. Uh oh. Hang on. You know, you know which one it is? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you've seen the video, but look, man, the other night it was a strange, it was the strangest dream. I was in that REM sleep. And I don't I don't go there often, at least that I know of, right? <laughs> if I do, I don't know. But I, I know I was in it because it was one of those moments where I felt so good. And I even seen myself with a smile on my face, right? And then I woke up. But I woke up. I had this dream that I was holding a RE20 <laughs> in my hand. And when I woke up, I was smiling, man. I was like, and I had that on my mind. I was like, is that a sign? I, I need to get another. <laughs> Actually, I felt good, man. It was actually after one of those sleeps where, you know, you rested. And you know you got some good rest finally, you know. It, it, <laughs> it wasn't in my hand, but what I did is I put it on my phone as a reminder 
what you know about getting this I don't think I've ever seen that mic. Is it a newer mic or an old mic? Okay. Oh, really? PL10. Okay, let's see here. I got to put that in here. PL10. Is it gray? What color is it? Oh my gosh, man. Wow. You know, uh, if you look at these mics, look at this. You see, you see that 642 hanging above my head? <laughs> You know those ribs. You know all about why the ribs are there, right? Okay. Well, the RE20 has them too. Does that P? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I love those electric voices, man. Built to last, man. They are built to last. So I had that RE20 for a while and I actually did some work with it. And I had my um, SM57 at the same time. And you know what, dude? I never, I never did an AB or tried to like, because I knew they were two different monsters, right? And from, you know, a different creator. And I never like, okay, well, I'm going to put this one up on the same preamp. And I, I never tested them to see, you know, for my for myself. I just used them in different applications. And so, uh, but you know, this time around, I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> Try it out. Yeah, man. So I, I did want to say I did enjoy my RE20 and I really, um, I mean, it had a different sound. It did have a different sound. You know, mm -hmm. so you know what I did, man? Let me tell you, Dennis. I got you here, man. I want to tell you what I did. So the other night, uh, and this is what happened last night. Last night when I did my Van Halen video, okay all this popping and stuff going on in the video okay now whenever i'm whenever i'm tracking like right now i don't hear it so what i did was i changed my interface because you and i were talking about what well, you change your interface i changed it and for several different uh shows that i did never heard the popping and i thought well okay i fixed the problem it was the interface that Dennis had mentioned. No, that ain't the problem. It came back, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, dude, it may be. Uh, I have a lady over here behind me, and she does ham radio. Okay, and I'm thinking she's keying down, Bubba, when I'm trying to do my show, and it's and it's causing interference within my internet. She's and she's right behind me. So I mean, I don't know because I just don't know. But you know, I'm trying to whittle it down. You know what? She's such a nice lady. She tried to get me into doing the ham thing with her right <laughs> so i'm sure she'll have no problem man i just need to go talk to her and say hey you know i'm gonna be getting on you want to get on and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh 
I know, man. Life's a trip, man. But yeah, you know, that's frustrating when you don't hear anything wrong going in. Everything sounds great. Levels look good. You know, you got the correct amount of everything happening and you can actually do the test before it gets there. And then when you listen back to your video, all this stuff and you're going, dang, man, what the heck, you know? I know, man. So how was your, how was your Christmas? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Bull Tide writes in again. Thank you, Bull Tide, by the way, for writing in. He says, push their camera to the broadcast by clicking show in stream at the top right corner of their camera source. Is that for you or is that for me? He still isn't in 20 minutes and 10 seconds. Dude, you and I have been talking since for maybe an hour. Yeah, that's okay, so this is what he says again. Let me read this right. Push, push their camera to the broadcast by clicking show in stream the top right corner of their camera no no okay oh wow what's that Hear me okay? Huh. Okay. Everything's good. Okay. Okay. Uh, I hear you. Do you hear me? Mm hmm. It's all good. <laughs> hey, is everything good, Bull Tide? Give me a thumbs up, man. Okay, he's he says he's got a thumbs up. I don't know what happened, man. I don't know why Bull Tide wasn't hearing us. Um, let's blame the media. So anyway, man. What's going to happen for the new year, man? Give me something to get pumped up and excited about. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, great, man. right awesome man awesome you know you know what man i might i might get you to build my um 251 you know, we'll have to talk, you know, on pricing and all that other good stuff. Are you still there? Okay. And, um, but yeah, man, I want to try to do that and see if, uh, and see if, you know, what, what you could work with me on that, you know? I mean, awesome, dude. Wow. Let me ask you, man, that transformer in that mic, do you know which one they're using in that mic? Oh, definitely. Definitely. 
that sounds yeah yeah but isn't that like one of the better ones that's what i was thinking okay okay Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I tell you what, that Cinemag sounds really good, man. I know what that one sounds like. Um, but yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Do you know what um, capsule they're using? I should have read that information you sent me, but what? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. I tell you what, uh, you can really tell the difference uh, when you get a hold of a good microphone and then when you have one that's, you know, not. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to do some, you know. <laughs> I bet, I bet. And it's having the right tools, right? Having the right tools, man. Golly. You know, I was watching a few videos on Al Smith the other night, man. That guy, wow, Dennis. Micro, microphone lover. Microphone lover. He uses those mics. I was watching one of the videos, man. He was, I mean, just, you know. Yeah, but I mean, he was like, oh, man, precise. He spent 10 minutes on, you know, angling that 414 perfectly down on that tom or whatnot. You know, I mean, he'd get. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, no. Right, exactly. The whole vibe is gone. Yeah, because when they're ready, they don't want to have to wait. Exactly. Man, I tell you what, uh, I experienced that on uh, my last little gig that I was doing. I had another guy over here who was, you know, running an engineer for me. And I was like, when you're ready to do it, you don't have, uh-uh. Uh I'm ready. Let's do another take. You don't have to ask me this, ask me that. Let's just go. Hit record, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, man. Yeah, no kidding, man. But I tell you what, um, yeah, there's so much to all that, you know, uh, being ready. You know, if the artist is ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. You know, um, yeah, that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's something, man, because, um, you know, that plays a large role in everybody being ready. But I was going to tell you about uh, how... You already know all this. Yeah, you, you already know. But what I was going to say was, was he likes, he likes that stuff to bleed into the mic. He likes working in Omni so that, that, you know, this over here bleeds into a little bit because he thinks that, well, he says, not he thinks, he knows that uh, in the end results, that's going to glue everything together. Just perfect. Right. So he said that he had, um, and when he said this, I had to just take a deep breath and a big, and a big drink. But he said, uh, I have two 67s. Okay. And he says, same everything, but they sound different. You know Right, right. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I guess that's just has to do with the tolerance or whatever on the capacitor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And over time, you know. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right right and so the transformer too plays a large role on how long how long the tubes are going to last as well correct i mean say like you got a tube amp and you got a transformer in there and it's just totally Right. Okay. But anyway, whenever he was telling me, he was t he was not telling me, but whenever I was watching the show, uh, and he was saying he had those sixty sevens. If you, this is what he said: if you can get some, <laughs> I know, man.
Wow. What mic was it that, um, God, hey, man. The microphone that, the Neumann mic, it's the little fat boy. It's got the little, it's not an LED. It's actually a bulb on the front of it. Little red. Yeah. Have you ever used that microphone? No, but I mean, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. That'd be a die for a microphone just because, I mean, the aesthetics of that mic. Are you kidding me, Dennis? Wow. I know, man. But it just looks awesome. And what's the new one out? TLM puts one out now. It's about $1,400 or something like that. Okay. Uh, I'm good to go. Right. Yeah, they do make some good stuff, man. Which one is... Which one is Ken Templin using? Is that the 170 or 149? Ken, uh, Ken Templin? He, he does like, uh, I don't know, man. He does like uh, vocal coach stuff. Yeah, he uses this mic extensively on all his artists that he you know, trains to sing. Man, I tell you what, that uh, that guy, have you ever heard him sing? Wow, you need to check him out. Ken Templin. Ken Templin, man. He does some, uh, let's see here, man. Uh, very interesting. And he does he does all kind of styles, okay. So he can sing any 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 teaches. He has like millions of followers and whatnot. But he has you know he has a class, he has a school, but he teaches in in a way that um, you won't damage your voice, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, man. But I you know I want to say I ran across this guy about. Um, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. Okay. And, uh, so he's been around a long time, you know? Um, but my brother ran across him the other day and says, Hey man, have you seen this guy? <laughs> and I said, Oh yeah, man, I know that. I, yeah. Yeah. I know you're talking about him, but he had some, he had some chick sounding like some other chick and, he actually can teach you how to sound like a particular person with your own personality or whatever. But, uh, yeah, man, check him out. I thought I had a little video on my phone, but I, I can't find it right now. But yeah, that's perfect. But anyway, uh, I was curious to know what mic that he was using on there. I won. I was thinking it was maybe the 170 or the 149. Wow. Is that a solid state FET or what type of mic? Mm. Wow.
Okay. Did you? Right, right. Well, you know what? I really didn't uh, particularly care for the way that XLR was mounted right on the freaking board like that, man. Remember you showed me the Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Right. It's, <laughs> here's the good thing about putting them together yourself. You see all the parts. You see all the working parts before you actually. And that's a nice thing, man. I kind of like, like seeing those wires attached to the board. And, you know, I don't know, man. I, for me, it just seems like... Uh, you know, they just don't build things like they used to. Dennis, they're gone, man. So, yeah, so now you can have a circuit board. You can have a circuit board with a piece of paper and ink, basically. Wow. Super light. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's crazy, man. Man, that's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Send me that link. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Uh Wow. Wow. I bet so, man. That's cool. So you just hang them on your ear, right? You just hang them on your ear. <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. Well, Dennis, thank you for joining in tonight, man. I can't believe we actually got this. We got this. Yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know what the pop is. No. No. You know. Yeah, when I see the feed, I'll know. Uh, but yeah, man, I don't, you know, uh, just one of those things I might have to figure it out. It could be my lady friend over there, man, keying in. <laughs> because you remember the first time, what was it? I couldn't hear you. Or no, you couldn't hear me. The It was fine, right. <laughs> and then, no, it was either me, I couldn't hear you, or you couldn't hear me, man. Just a bad deal, man. It was a real bad deal. I don't know what the heck. So anyway, I'm glad. I, I'm grateful, man. Right? I'm grateful that uh, we were able to like hang out together tonight, man. Talk about some cool stuff. 
you know? So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, Dennis, uh, Reba, Deniera, and me here, Audio Master, Randy, uh, we, we love you guys hanging out with us tonight, man, and um, being a part of the ride that we're, this journey that we're all on, right? And uh, we're glad that you tuned in tonight, and we can't wait to see you again. we got some other great stuff coming up, and hopefully, Dennis, if you're available, you can pop in with me tomorrow night, too, man. I don't know what your schedule is like or whatever, but you know, you know. <laughs> so man, uh, this is what I wanted to say before we let everybody go, man. Um, let's just all throw in our wishes and, um, and good karma toward everyone in this moment. And I was saying that the other night, Dennis, because man, we sure we need we need some good karma to come back toward us, right? I mean, you know, I was uh, let's just you know wish our family and our friends and our coworkers and everybody that we're acquainted with good prosperity, man, and good health. You know, I say that because man, we all need some back, right? So anyway, thank you guys for joining in tonight. Dennis, I'm going to catch up with you in a little while, man. Uh, thank you guys for joining in tonight. If you haven't rang that bell, uh, slam the bell, subscribe to the channel. And Sounds good, man. Thank you so much, guys, and we'll see you again. Good night, man.